When visiting Mexico City, there's a lot of things to know before you visit. So Giovanni and I have actually been exploring for the last two weeks. We've done a bit of it by ourselves and we've also done a little bit of it with family friends who actually live in Mexico City. So in this video, we're going to be sharing safety, transportation, when to visit, where to stay, where not to stay, as well as general tips. Close on 100 million tourists visit Mexico City each year. To marvel at its pre-Columbian architecture, its fascinating museum collection, the unforgettable street food and its all-around modern meets historic city charm. Although most tourists will tell you that their experience of the city was wonderful, CDMX is known to be one of the more dangerous cities in Mexico, so you may want to know a few things to look out for before you go. So the first point we're going to talk about is of course safety because I think that's one of the most frequently asked questions by tourists is how safe is Mexico City? Yeah, it, it is relatively it. safe. It is a large city so you can expect things to happen but there are a few precautions that you can take which we're going to talk about now. One of our first recommendations is avoid walking at night. Specifically in central historical areas, you have to be very conscious to walk around those areas when it's dark. It's especially carrying valuables or anything of that sort. Something that we used while we were here which actually was very helpful was we found releasable cable ties. So we we just sealed off our bags specifically on the public transportation like we went on the metro bus and on the metro those worked really well but pickpocketing is also a thing here so just be aware of that the, the, the releasable cable ties are very convenient because they're like a lock but you can open them up again yes also if you have valuables try to have them all them in your even funny packs yeah very very convenient mm -hmm. and your valuables at least in front of your pockets, never, never in, in the, the back, back pockets. So in our time here, we've noticed a very, very high police presence, literally in every single area we've been in, specifically in Centro Historico. Literally, the streets are lined with police officers. One of our recommendations, if you are unfortunately a victim of crime within Mexico City, there is actually an app called Mi Policia, exactly. I uh, would recommend downloading it ahead of time, keeping the GPS on on your phone. Basically, if you are a victim of crime, you can hop up to the app, They'll be put into direct communication with a chief police and they actually are able to pinpoint your exact location so they can come to you if necessary. We actually need to ask police for some directions. What I can say, the police has been very friendly, very uh, um, willing to, to help. Like we said here, the, the cops are really helpful, but you have to be able to speak Spanish because most of them can't yeah. speak English. Despite there being a very high police presence in Mexico City, that's a good thing, but it also doesn't necessarily mean that you're safe because unfortunately there is very low co confidence in the police in this country due to corruption. Corrupt cops are definitely a thing here. We've, we've read some stories. So we're just about to get into how to deal with corrupt cops if you unfortunately happen to come across that. If you actually get like detained or being asked for the police to be searched, or always remain calm. Respect them, make them feel superior. Don't resist if they want to arrest you. Don't challenge them. Definitely don't challenge them because then you're going to make things a lot worse for yourself. Luckily, we haven't experienced anything bad, but we are part of quite a lot of expat groups within Mexico, specifically in Mexico <laughs> City. And I've actually read quite a few posts talking about how people have been stopped by the police to be searched and they've actually had all of their belongings stolen from them. Unfortunately, if that happens, there's really nothing much that you can do other than reporting the police officer. Just keep in mind, you've got to pay close attention to what the cop's name is and the patrol units if, if you yeah. can see it. Well, that's one of the ways to like, so actually report them. To report. I mean, not saying anything is actually going to happen from that, but the, the option is there, and I think it's 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 great. To, yeah, to it's, it's it. better than doing nothing, I suppose. On to the second topic, transportation here in CDMX. In terms of transportation in CDMX, we have quite a few options to, to use to move around yourself. I'm going to start with the option of like Uber, but also there's another app, it's called Didi, which is more like, like the Mexican or like the Latin, Latin American, American version of it. They have pretty much the same prices. Perhaps it is just slightly like cheaper. Unless you are actually struggling to get an Uber, it is another option. Okay, so now in terms of taxis, you'll see the taxis all over Mexico City. You'll see there the pink and white vehicles. The thing is, we didn't use taxis. However, we did approach a taxi. The other night we were at Azteca Stadium, which is relatively far out of the, the center of the city. So it was a relatively long drive. I'd say at least 25 to 30 minutes. Um, and right outside the station, there are a whole lot of taxis. So Giovanni was like, well, instead of trying to get Uber, let's go, go ask the taxi driver. 
essentially the, the taxi driver quoted us 950 pesos for the drive where we then went on to uber right afterwards and our uber ride was like 280 pesos so just because of that we just decided we're not going to bother with the taxis uber dd are definitely the way to go now in terms of local transportation if you're really looking to save money on transportation here you've got the metro bus and you've got the metro like, underground underground the subway, subway yeah. kind of thing super super affordable so now we'll start with the metro bus the thing with metro bus is it's kind of difficult to understand if you don't know the area very well and if you don't know what the nearest station is to wherever you're currently at or where, where or you're you headed to, to. Yeah. i don't know if i could recommend it also that the bus drivers are in a big hurry because they're you know on a schedule so they don't really have time to chat and explain things to you but if you are comfortable with your sense of direction if you can speak decent spanish and if you want to save money metro bus is definitely the way to go guys i just want to say don't be afraid of using the metro bus number one it's super affordable and actually these buses are very new very clean very well maintained and they've got strict rules on there people try to get funny like they're gonna kick, get kicked off so don't be afraid you have like emergency like brakes or emergency like sticks. like alarms if, if, yeah. if, if anyone violates you or steals something from you you can make the bus stop immediately one of the most common used public transportation here in mexico city is metro underground and because number one is cheap you can move from one point of the city to the other extreme for only five pesos which is 25 cents it's crazy it is crazy to be honest it, it has a really bad reputation because there's a lot of muggings there pickpocketing Mo mainly the pickpocketing thing is what the people will tell you just be careful with your belongings <laughs> And something that I noticed that I actually really liked between the metro bus and the metro station is they have a designated area for women and children. So it's a designated area of the station and then a designated cart or area within the, the metro or in the bus. Because, I mean, you know, harassment, sexual harassment on these kinds of transportation, is it's definitely a thing. If you are a woman and you have children, you've got that option, which I think is really great. Not the easiest to maneuver if you don't know the city very well, if you can't speak Spanish, but if you're looking to save money, Metro is definitely the way to go. And keep in mind, one Metro card, the same Metro card, you can use between the Metro bicycles, the Metro bus, and the Metro, the metro train. So the next option you've got in terms of transportation are the hop-on, hop-off buses, which are like the touristic buses. You've got the option of Turi bus or capital bus. On our second day, we took the Turi bus, which was really great. We can highly recommend it. If you are going to take the Turi bus, we'd recommend doing it either on your first or your second day because it gives you a good idea of the layout of the city. And if you're in Mexico City for a very short period of time and you specifically are looking to, to stop at the landmarks, it's, it's honestly the best option. One of the tickets that you get give you the access to the five circuits they have. Mm -hmm. So every circuit with have the landmark or the places you might be interested to visit yeah, something i would like to note though is in terms of like the amount of time you have available we find it kind of inconvenient because if you hop off at one spot and you miss the bus you're going to be waiting 20 to 40 minutes for the next bus which you know drains a lot of your time your limited time anyways and then if the the circuits say that they run until 7 p.m that doesn't mean that you can hop on the bus at 7 p.m it means that you need to start heading back to your starting destination at around 5 p.m because you're no longer allowed to get on the bus after a certain time. Like the, the service shuts down at seven, but that does not mean that the last bus is at seven. So if you are looking to see a lot of things, we'd recommend getting a, a multiple day pass. We just did a one day pass and to be honest, it wasn't actually enough. Yeah. So moving on to our next topic, when is the best time to visit in terms of the weather and like the, the special events. So starting with weather, you've got to keep in mind that Mexico City is located at a high altitude. So the climate is dry and it's not actually that warm in our opinion. We live in the Caribbean. For us, we are here in Mexico City during the summertime. So we pack shorts and like <laughs> little t-shirts and things. We haven't worn any of those things once. We've been in sneakers and jeans and like t-shirts and long shirts and jerseys the whole time because we don't find that it's like that warm something though that we did pick up from the locals that we spoke to is try to avoid rainy season because apparently rainy season can be very hectic and like i said it's a walking city so that can kind of like ruin your whole vacation plus we've also heard that the the roads and the sidewalks get like super flooded so i mean you can be, expect to be walking around with soaking wet shoes all day so we'd recommend heading down here in summertime if possible but if not i mean it's a great city either way one of the main months to visit mexico city is during independence day which falls in september we came two years ago and it was amazing yeah. they, just as a pro the city looks incredibly vibrant 
there's uh, a lot of decoration there is like a lot of fun going on and uh, a lot of festivity yeah a lot of souvenirs being sold a lot of extra performances and entertainment brought in exactly the only con with that because it's a major event here in mexico is this absolutely busy like so everywhere busy. is busy everywhere you go you will find tons of people um which is not bad i mean if you really like looking for something like that if, if it's not your case i think being in september during the mexican independence day it's it's beautiful it's an experience it's an experience but if you really like to have the city a little bit like like quieter i think you should avoid september point number four where to stay the first place where we stay wasn't exactly a centro historico but was very very close if you are specifically coming to mexico city to see all the landmarks everything is kind of concentrated in centro historico so if that is your purpose of visiting mexico city we'd highly recommend checking out anything within centro historico if you're looking for something slightly quieter like we we came ac across a gem literally just a block outside of centro historico we had the convenience of being really close but it was much quieter we can we can totally recommend this hotel if this hotel is uh it, it was so worth it was so worth it yeah yeah Giovanni and I typically stay in Airbnbs when we do our travels here in Mexico, but we're here for 10 nights. So we specifically were looking for a hotel that would be comfortable for us to do a little bit of work and to be able to explore the city. So this is our room, very small, very compact, but enough space for everything. So behind this door, we've got a very simple little bathroom. We've got a shower, toilet, basin with a mirror, which I love. The lighting is excellent there. We've also got a queen size bed, which I'm super excited for. We've only got a double bed at home, so looking forward to the extra space. And then, like I said, because we wanted to be comfortable, we booked this place specifically because they've got a nice little closet space. They've got a desk, which is not something we usually have. So we can do some work, which is wonderful. And the best thing about this is we're not at the beach anymore and we've got a beautiful view of the city. For the second half of our trip, we actually stay at a family friend's house. They are actually not in the crowded area of Mexico City. We are in, in the area where there's like a beautiful park, there's a lot of cafes. Vibrant it is very charming. vibrant, yeah. And, and these areas, uh, what we can recommend is called Polanco, Roma Sur, Juarez, and La Condesa. Yes. Yeah. So basically we stayed in Roma Sur, which is where our family friend's home is. And if you're looking for more of like a chill vibe, you want to like not be in the hustle and bustle of the city like if you were to stay in Centro Historico we can highly recommend these four areas. So now that we've told you where we would recommend you staying we've got to recommend where not to stay because that's very important in Mexico City. There are some neighborhoods in Mexico City that even our family friends who were born and raised here don't even go themselves. So just so you know Iztapalapa, Merced and Tepito no go zones at all would highly recommend avoiding those areas and now something that we we actually did while we were here is we went to see the mariachi performances at Garibaldi. Garibaldi is about a three to four block walk away from uh, Centro Historico. You can definitely see the decline in like safety and cleanliness and stuff as you head towards Garibaldi. Garibaldi is not really uh, known as the safest place but we would highly recommend stopping at Garibaldi. Go watch you Go watch your mariachi and head back to Centro Historico. You don't want to go any further outside of, of Centro because that's where you start to get into the sketchy areas. We can confirm this area is definitely on the sketchy side. This point is one of the funniest ones <laughs> because uh, I'm going to explain it right away. Moctezuma's Revenge. Basically Moctezuma's Revenge is food poisoning. I got sick. Usually Moctezuma's Revenge affects tourists but in this case I was affected by but I, I drank something at Xochimilco, which is called Michelada, and I don't know, like I got sick, we lost two of our days while we were here because I was, I was very ill. If you really want to try the street food, you've got to know that food poisoning, aka Moctezuma's Revenge, is a real thing. So just so you know, it, it is a real risk that you, that you are going to be taking by eating street food. But again, street food is part of the culture here, so I mean, it really is up to you if you're willing to take that risk. Some, sometimes it's, it's really worth it to take the Yeah, no, the food is really good. <laughs> Something we noticed specifically from walking around Centro Historico is we actually struggled to find bathrooms. There are options of what they call WC or wash cloak. Wash Water clothes. Water closet or something like that. You'll see big signs along the street that will say WC. Now these are the public bathrooms. You're going to need coins to get into them. Fair warning though, they're nasty. They're horrible. But if you've got no other option, 
that's your option. Otherwise, what we'd recommend is rather stepping into like a Starbucks or something like that. I mean, of course, it's a bit more expensive because you need to, of course, purchase like a coffee or something. But if you're looking for a cleaner bathroom, we'd recommend doing that. Or if you are suffering from Moctezuma's Revenge and you really need to have the WCs, I'd... Stay in your, stay in your hotel room, <laughs> just for everyone's sake. <laughs> so we're on to our last segment of this video, which is just like our general tips from our personal experience here. Number one, carrying cash. Of course, we would not recommend carrying a lot of cash because like we mentioned in terms of safety a little bit earlier, but always have cash on you. Number one, if you're going to be eating any street food or if you're going to be buying from any of the street vendors, if you're going to be headed to Chipotle Park, they're not going to accept card at all whatsoever. Number two, if you need to use uh, restrooms, you're always going to need to pay with coins to use restrooms here. And number three, we actually went to a number of like legit establishments, like restaurants, museums, things like that, where they didn't accept cards. Then they didn't give any any rhyme or reason why they weren't accepting cards. They just no cards. So mm -hmm. have cash on you always. I hope that you guys found this video informative. I know, unfortunately, when people hear the word Mexico City, they automatically think, oh, it's so dangerous. And yeah, there are the, the bad parts of it. But honestly, there's just so much culture, heritage, food, monuments. There's just so many beautiful things to explore in the city. You'd really be doing yourself a disservice by avoiding the city completely because it's dangerous. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to give us a big thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our future uploads. That being said, we will see you in the next episode. Hasta, Hasta luego. luego. Join us next week where we share our comprehensive guide on what to eat, see and do in Mexico City. Pero el día en que yo me muera.